All right, so we have these um, profiles set up on these hosted points on the line. And it gets a little messy uh, when you start working. So the dimensions are a little big and they're kind of dark. You can control the size of the dimension by changing the scale. So the scale is set to 16th. If I hit it up to an eighth, it's going to half the size of the text. Um, the other thing that you can do is you could make these dimensions a little lighter so you, they're not as prevalent. So if I pick the dimension string, you'll get an edit type. So we're going to modify the baked in parameters for this string. If I go to edit type, and for the dimensions, you'll have the color. You can come in and I'll change it to like a light gray. Right, click OK. So they're a little less prevalent. I can see the actual form a little bit more. It's up to you whether you want to do that. Um, OK, so what I have now are these three rectangles that are hosted on these points. And what I want to do is create a blend between them. And so the way that you create a blend in Revit is to pick the things you want to blend. So I'm going to left click on this rectangle. I'm going to hold down the Control key because Control is Add in Revit, not Shift. So And add those. And up here, you don't get a series of you have a command line where you can type in blend. Basically, you hit create form, and Revit looks at what you've selected and does what it can do with it. So if I go to create form, it blends that. That's pretty much the only thing that it can do. It looks at it and blends it. So now we have this form that is now hosted to those profiles. If I go to my Family Types dialog box up here, which I had out once before, You'll see we have the height, the D1, the L1, L1, oh, I did Ws. I should probably, well, let's see which ones are driving which ones, and then I'll update it. Um, so typically what I will do, this is L1. That should actually be L1, so let me go in there and change that. I'm going to edit that and change that from D1 to L1, okay? And then... What I will typically do is kind of order them. So L, um, L1 and W1 maybe would be together, right? And then W2 and L2. And then height can be wherever you want it, at the bottom or the top. OK, so now I'm going to go in and just sort of even these out. I'll round them, you know, to 20, 20. You could change it to something else. but just to sort of even it out. And then if I hit Apply, you'll see it'll update in the screen. And that's just for the 51. If I go to the 71 and hit Apply, you'll see that it gets taller and goes back to those others. So you can come in and actually set these at all different sizes. And it takes a while to set them, right? So. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. We'll see what this looks like when I'm done. Right, so it's quite a bit different than the other one. OK. Um, you can also come in, and if I go to my 90 and apply, right, it goes back to that original settings of the, and I could come in here and adjust these. But let's say I wanted L1 to drive um, L2 and L3. So I'll set L1 to 30. And then L2, I can set to L1 times 2 in this little formula and hit Apply. And now that goes to that. And then if I go to L3, I could do L1 divided by 2 and hit Apply, right? And it goes to that. And so then we could also have W1 drive W2 and W3. So maybe we do the opposite. Um, this would be W2 divided by 2, and this would be, whoops, oops, sorry, W1, and W1 times 2. Right, and then apply. And that means that if I change W1 to 10, then it cascades through that whole thing, right? And if I change L1 to 50, Right? It changes through that entire thing. So you can also do that. Notice that, oh, it's getting really big there. Notice that 
if you put a formula in, it applies to all of them, right? So now this one will update based on that formula. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do it, okay? Um, so that's creating the blend. Um, when we come back, we'll um, create the void.